Currently, it's summer, which means blue skies and long days filled with blinding hot sun scorching your skin. Why subject yourself to that? Come back inside and let's crochet the perfect pillow for resting your head and dreaming of fall. Hello crochet friends! I'm Grayspace and welcome to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this guy right here, which is our rock friend pillow, which is an over the garden wall inspired pillow. I assume that if you're here, you already know about over the garden wall and that is why you would like to make this. You, just like me, are a huge freaking fan. And I say welcome to you. I will be doing more over the garden wall inspired projects. So if you like that kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe and stick around because I definitely have more on the way and soon, in fact. But back to today's video and our rock friend pillow. Let's go over and show you what materials you need so we can get started making this guy. For this project, you will need approximately 110 yards of Premier Parfait XL in gray. Alternatively, you can use regular blanket yarn in gray held double-stranded, which uses approximately 250 yards. You will also need blanket yarn in mustard or yellow, blanket yarn in red, blanket yarn in black, blanket yarn in navy blue, and blanket yarn in white. Nine millimeter crochet hook, a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook, polyfill stuffing or the stuffing material of your choice, scissors, a yarn needle, stitch markers, and sewing pens. To start, grab your crochet hook. This hook for the project we're doing is going to be a nine millimeter crochet hook, and the yarn we will be using is Premier's Parfait XL, which is a thicker gauge blanket yarn. You could also use just a double strand of regular gauge blanket yarn, like a burnout blanket, and that um, does match the gauge. I have done the project with both. But today we will be using the Parfait XL. We're going to start by forming a magic circle. However, the fuzziness of this yarn really prevents you from tightening the magic circle appropriately. So in order to make sure my magic circle is secure, we are going to do that with a scrap piece of just regular blanket yarn. So I'm going to form a magic circle with my blanket yarn. A little too tight there. All right, and now that we've got our little magic circle ready, I'm going to take a loop in a slip knot that I formed here on my uh, Parfait XL. We're going to put that loop onto the crochet hook, and then I'm going to pull through here and then tighten down, tighten down here onto my yarn. And now we're going to just crochet like normal into our magic circle using our bigger yarn. And I'm going to place eight single crochet into this magic circle. Three, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to put my hook into this first stitch that we did and then go back here and tighten our magic circle using our piece of blanket yarn. And I'm just, it's not something you can see very well, but what I like to do is put fingers against it here and just kind of push gently. This blanket yarn can snap if you pull on it too roughly. But now that it's in place and it's tight, I'm going to tie my blanket yarn into a knot here on the inside just to make sure that it stays nice and secure like that all right so we are ready to move on to our next round for round two we are going to be doing a single crochet and then three increases 
and a single crochet and three increases. So we're going to repeat that pattern twice, which will get us back to our first stitch here. And I'm going to start so that we don't get lost by placing a stitch marker into the final stitch of my round. Like that. And now we're ready to go. So we're going to single crochet here and then we're going to increase into the next three stitches. So placing two single crochets into that stitch and then moving to the next one and doing the same thing. And then one more increase. Then we're going to place a single crochet and be sure to pull your stitches back because these increases will kind of bunch up and make sure that you are getting the correct stitch here. So there's our single crochet <clears throat> and we're going to do three more increases. That's one increase. Two. Take our little stitch marker out so that we can get in here and put in our final increase. Like this. We're going to replace our stitch marker and move on to round three. So for this round, we're going to do a new pattern where we're going to do three single crochets and then four increases and repeat that twice. So here we're going to go single crochet and that's two single crochet and that's a third single crochet and then we're going to do four increases that's one That's two. And that's three. And four. All right, and we're gonna repeat that pattern yet again. So we're gonna do three single crochets And then we're going to do four increases. There's one, two, three, and our final increase. Put our stitch marker back into that stitch there and you can see that now we're starting to see an oval form and that is our goal we're trying to make this a lumpy rock shape so for our next round we are going to do two single crochets And then we're going to increase and then we're going to do two more single crochet and now we're going to do a single crochet and then an increase This is our increase and then we're going to repeat that and do another single crochet and then an increase and 
And now we're going to do five single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're going to do a single crochet and increase, and we're going to repeat that four times. So we're going to go single crochet, increase. single crochet and increase single crochet tug on my yarn <laughs> and then increase and then last one a single crochet And an increase. We put our little stitch marker back. And we're ready to move on to the next round. So you should have 29 stitches when this is all said and done. For round five, we are going to do a stitch repeat of three single crochets and then an increase. And we're going to do that seven times. So we're going to do, that's one single crochet, two, and three. And then we're going to increase. And then three single crochets. And an increase. And we're just going to keep doing that around until we get to our last stitch. And I'll meet you back here. All right, I have my last series of that repeat and I'm on my final increase here. So we'll place our increase and then you can see we still have one stitch remaining and we're just going to place one single crochet in that final stitch there and put our stitch marker back in our final stitch. All right, and it's time to move on to round six. So here we're going to establish a pattern that we're just going to expand upon for a little bit. So we've got our oval starting to form. It's got a little bit of a bump here. And this is going to be the top of our rock. And for round six, we are going to do three single crochets and then increase four times. So let's start with that. Two, three, and then increase. One, and this is our final increase of that little series. And now we're back around to about halfway. And at this point, we are gonna do four single crochets. That's three, and that is four. And now we're gonna pick back up with our pattern of doing three single crochet and an increase to the end of the round. So we've got one, two, three, increase like that to the end of the round. All right, I've reached my final stitch. It's my increase on my last of the four of that little series. So we did my last little increase and we're placing our stitch marker back in place, but it's being difficult. There we go. So round six is complete. Now we're going to move on to round seven where we're going to do the similar pattern. We're going to do a, a repeat of 
four single crochets and an increase. And then we're gonna do that four times. That's three, and that's four. And then our increase. We're gonna do that four times. And then when I get back over to this side, I'm gonna do four single crochets. And then I'm gonna repeat that series of four single crochets and then an increase until I get to the end of the round. So I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. Okay, friends, we've done our repeat of four single crochets and an increase four times now. And so I'm gonna do my four single crochets. And then I'm gonna do the pattern again. So we're gonna pick back up and that's one, two, three, four single crochets and then an increase. And I'm gonna do this to the end of the round. All right, friends, I've reached my final stitch of round seven and it's my increase. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out and place two single crochet in that final stitch like that. And round seven is complete. You should have 52 stitches when you're done with this round. And then we're gonna move on to round eight. And for round eight, we're gonna do the same pattern. We're just gonna increase one stitch. We're gonna do single crochet five times and then increase. And we'll do that pattern four times until we get around to this side where we're gonna do our four single crochet and then pick our pattern back up here to the end of the round. So let's get started with that. We're gonna five single crochet, two, three, four, five single crochet. And in this next stitch, I'm gonna increase. We're going to do that again, and we're going to keep doing that four times in total until we've gotten halfway around. And now it's time to increase. Like that. Okay, I've done four of that series of five single crochets and then an increase. And now I'm going to place four single crochets here. That's two. That's three, and that's four. And now I'm gonna pick that pattern back up and do five single crochets and an increase till I get to the end of the round. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then increase. And I'm gonna do that series three more times and I'll meet you back here reached the final stitch of this round. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker as per usual and place my increase in this final stitch. And then replace my stitch marker. And we are ready to move on to the next round. So this time you should have at the end of that round 60 stitches in your or work. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do six single crochets before we do our increase. Repeat that series four times and then do our four single crochets on the other side here and then pick back up our series to repeat that four more times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochets, and then an increase. I'm going to do that three more times and I'll meet you back. Okay, I've done all four of my little series there and I'm ready to do my four single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, and now I'm ready to pick my pattern back up of going six single crochets. So that's two, three, four, 
five and six single crochets then we're going to place an increase and i'm going to do that pattern three more times and i'll meet you back here for the final stitch of the round okay we've done six single crochets and increases around and i'm ready for that final increase for the fourth in that series of stitches we're going to increase like that and as always put our stitch marker right back in that final stitch and you can see our shape starting to get bigger okay next time we're going to do a little bit different okay so you should have 68 stitches when we are done with the round that we just finished at round nine and for this round we're going to switch it up and we're gonna bisect the four stitches that we were doing at the center of our pattern here and we're going to do two here and two here so this time our pattern is going to be two single crochet and then we're going to pick back up with our uh, set of four doing seven single crochets and then an increase and then seven single crochets and then an increase so there's one two three four five six and our seventh single crochet and now we're going to increase and I'm going to do that three more times and then we're going to repeat that whole pattern of doing two single crochets and then single crochet seven increase single crochet seven increase and a single crochet seven and then increase so I will meet you back here at the we'll stop here I'll do my three more seven uh, sets of seven single crochets and an increase and I'll meet you back at the center point Okay, we finished our complete first series of stitches of the two single crochets and then the single crochet seven increase. I just did my final increase in that set of four. And now we're just gonna pick back up to repeat that again. So two single crochets. That, <clears throat> and then we're gonna do seven single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like that. And then we're going to increase. And I'm gonna do seven single crochet and increase three more times until we get to the end of the round. I'll meet you back here on that final stitch. I've reached my final stitch of round 10 and it's going to be an increase so we'll remove our stitch marker and place two single crochets in this final stitch here and then I will replace my stitch marker and we're ready to move on to uh, round 11 and for round 11 we're going to do a similar pattern to the one we just did instead of doing seven single crochet we're going to do eight single crochet so to start with we do two single crochet here and then we're going to do single crochet eight and increase and so that'll be ten total single crochet in this first thing before we increase and then we'll do eight and an increase three more times there okay so we've got our two we're going to do eight seven and eight and now we're ready for an increase all right and then we're going to do single crochet eight and an increase again we'll do that four times in total when we get done with that series we're going to do two single crochets 
and then keep going with our pattern of eight single crochets and an increase. But you know, I'll meet you back here at center point in just a moment. All right, we've completed that first series and I am ready to restart. And to restart, we're gonna do our two single crochet. And then we're gonna start eight single crochet, so that's 10 total. Six, seven, and eight single crochet, and now we're ready to increase like that. And I'm gonna keep going until I get to the end of our round for that final stitch, and I'll meet you back. All right, we're ready for the final stitch of round 11 here, which is our last increase. Okay. And then the next three rounds, we are going to be doing a single crochet in every single stitch. And what I like to do to help keep track of my projects at that point is I'll put my stitch marker here and instead of putting it through the top of the stitch, I'm going to place it around the side of the stitch like this. And then I'm gonna close it See if you can see that. And now when I start placing my single crochets for my round, this is across the side of the final stitch of my last round. And I know that right here is the end of round 11 and that this is the start of round 12. And rather than moving my stitch marker every round, I'll just leave it here and I can count how many rounds it's been. And when I got in my three, I'll take it out and move it at that point. Um, but I'll show you what that looks like when we snap back here after we've done our three rounds of just single crochet. So go through here, single crochet every single stitch for three rounds and I will meet you back here at the end of round 14 and we'll talk some more. All right, we've completed round 14 and we are back to our stitch marker. And here you can see what I was talking about where I have put this around the side of the stitch and this is one round, this is two rounds, and this is three rounds. So that way I can keep track of them and know exactly how many I did without having to move my stitch marker in the middle of it. But now that I've done all three, I'm gonna move my stitch marker up here to the final stitch of this round and we're going to move on to round 15. Now we're going to start decreasing and we're going to just start reversing the process and this time we're going to do two single crochets to start things out and then we're going to start with a single crochet eight and then decrease and we'll do that four times. Okay so six, seven, and eight. And now we're going to decrease by doing an invisible decrease going through the front loops of these two stitches. Oh, this yarn is slippery. Like that, and then we're gonna finish our stitch. And I'm gonna do that three more times and then we'll repeat the whole process. So I'm gonna finish my next three series of single crochet eight decrease and I will check back in with you. All right, I finished my series of four on the decreases and now we're gonna repeat that whole sequence over again, starting with the two single crochets. So we're gonna go two single crochet and then eight single crochet Another six seven eight so for this first sequence there it's ten total single crochets 
And now we're going to decrease yet again. We're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through to finish our decrease. And I'm going to do three more of the single crochet eight and decrease until we get back to our stitch marker over here. And I'll meet you back there in just a sec when I'm done. I am at the last stitch here of round 15. So we're going to take our stitch marker out the last stitch, the last two stitches technically, but it's the last decrease. So I'm going to go underneath the front loop of both of those to do my last decrease and then put my stitch marker back in place here. And now we're going to move on to round 16. And this time we're going to do two single crochets to start off. And then we're going to do seven single crochets and then a decrease. And here is number seven. And now we're going to decrease. Like that. And I'm going to do three more of the single crochet seven and decrease. And I will check back in with you. Okay, I've completed my first series of stitches and now we are ready to repeat that. So what we're going to do is start with that single crochet two. And now single crochet seven and then decrease. Six and seven. And now we're going to decrease. And I'm going to do three more of the single crochet seven and then decrease until I am back at the stitch marker and I will meet you back there. We are at the last two stitches of our round here and I am going to remove my stitch marker and do our decrease and then put that stitch marker back and we're ready to move on to the next round. At this point, we should have 68 stitches in our work and we're going to keep reducing by eight stitches every time we do a decrease round, just kind of reversing our way back down to zero. And once we get down to close to there, we'll start stuffing the inside of our rock. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep trucking with our decreases. And for this round, for round 17, we are going to switch the format again, and we're going to go to uh, do six single crochets and a decrease. And we're not going to put the two in the front now. We're just going to go straight into that. And we're going to do a series of four sets of six single crochets and then a decrease. So to kick that off, we're going to do a decrease, or sorry, a single crochet. Um, and that's two three, four, five, and six. And then now we're going to decrease. And I'm going to do three more of those six single crochet and then decrease. And I will meet you back here. Okay. I've done all four sets of my six single crochet and decrease. And now I'm going to single crochet four. And now I'm going to restart my series of six single crochet and decrease and do four of those. And that will take us back to our little stitch marker here and complete our round. So I'm going to do those and I'll meet you back at the end of the round. All right, I've reached my stitch marker here and I am on my last decrease of this round, which is round 17. And you should have 60, six zero stitches at this point. We can see how it's starting to get smaller here. We're just going to keep on trucking to this series, which is going to be single crochet five, three, four, five. And then decrease. Three, four, 
Oh my goodness, there we go. This stuff is slick. And I'm going to do three more of those, so single crochet five and then decrease. And I will meet you back here at the end of those four, which will be the middle of our row. I've completed my four sets of single crochet five decrease, and now we are ready to do our uh, interlude here of four single crochets. And four. And now we're going to go back to our sequence of five single crochet decrease. And I'll do four sets of the five single crochet decrease, which should take us back to our stitch marker here. And I'll meet you when it's time for that final decrease. All right, it's time for that final decrease we discussed. Gonna go in those front loops as always for our invisible decrease. We'll replace our stitch marker. And after that round, we should have 52 stitches in our work. And it's time to keep on going. So let's move on to round 19. And this time we're going to do four single crochets and then a decrease. So one, two, three, four, and then decrease and same thing as the previous round we're gonna do three more sets of the single crochet four decrease and I'll meet you back here to do our interlude it's time for our interlude of our four single crochet right here two three and four and now we're going to keep going with our pattern of four single crochet and then a decrease until we get over here to our stitch marker and I'll meet you back here at that final decrease. I've reached that final decrease and it is time to end this round. Okay, I'm going to put that stitch marker back in place and round 19 is done. You should have 44 stitches at this point. And now we're going to start our next decrease round. This time we're going to do three single crochets and then we're going to do a decrease. Like that. And I'm going to do three more of those and then I'll meet you back for our interlude. All right, I just did my final decrease for that sequence of stitches and we are at our little interlude. And here we are gonna do, you guessed it, our four single crochet right here. Three and four. And now we're gonna go back to our sequence of three single crochet and a decrease until we get to our stitch marker, which should be four more sets of single crochet, three, and then decrease. I'll meet you back here as per usual for our final decrease of this round. Here we are at that final decrease of our round. So I'm gonna take that stitch marker out just like I always do. And we're gonna go that last decrease there place our stitch marker into our round right there. Now after that round we should have 36 stitches. Now at this point we're going to switch it up a little bit and this next round is going to be a little more interesting. So we're going to do single crochet four to start things off. So it's one, two, three, four, and then we're going to decrease and we're going to do a decrease and then the single crochet. Uh, we're going to do that three times. So we're going to go decrease. Come on, buddy. There you go. <laughs> so that's a decrease and then one single crochet. So that's one and then a decrease. And then a single crochet, and that's two. 
and then a decrease. Come on, buddy. There we go. And a single crochet. And that is our three. And now we're going to add an additional decrease. So that's a fourth decrease. And now I'm going to do 10 single crochet. So one, two, nine, and 10. And now we're going to do some more decreases and single crochets. So we're going to go decrease and then single crochet. That's one. A decrease and then another single crochet two Let's decrease and a single crochet and that's three and then another decrease right here at the end all right and after that we should have 28 stitches and we're going to stuff so i'm going to grab my polyfill all right i got a bunch of stuff in here and i'm going to start with a chunk of it here and start by shoving it out into the edges here now that's not nearly enough stuffing of course so we've got the kind of base of our shape down and now i'm going to start taking some floofed up handfuls of it here and start shoving around the outside to make sure that it's nice and full and i'm going to keep stuffing my rock and I will meet you back here in just a minute after I've got some more stuffing inside of this guy and I think it's uh, complete. So I think I've got this stuff to where we want it to be. And if you have any, you know, doubts as to whether you've stuffed enough, you can kind of go around the edge and kind of squeeze gently and see if you feel any sinking spots where it doesn't feel like the um, stuffing is filling, uh, filling out all the way to the edges. And then you can just shove a little bit more stuffing into that spot. Um, but I've gone around and done that and this guy feels pretty good. Actually, you know, now that I say that, this is a little bit under. And I won't need that much, but we'll grab a little fluff here. And then I'll just stuff into that little gap underneath. And that's better. That's better. And there we go. All right, so we're ready to proceed with the next round. The first stitch we're going to do is we're going to do two single crochet. So to kick things off, that's one and two single crochet. And then now we're going to do a decrease and then two single crochet after that. And we're going to do that little sequence three times. So decrease and then two single crochet and that's one and then we will decrease and then single crochet and then another single crochet and that's two and then we're going to decrease and then two single crochet and that is our three and now we're going to do another two single crochet that's one and two and then we're going to do our decrease and then two single crochet around. 
So decrease. And then two single crochet. Another decrease. And then two single crochet. Oh no, my stitch marker just fell. And then a decrease. single crochet and pick our stitch marker up out of the floof and put our stitch marker back in here all right and after that we should be down to 22 stitches all right so for this round we are going to do two single crochet and then decrease and we'll do that a series uh, for a total of five times and i'll meet you back here as soon as we have that one completed Okay, we're at our final two stitches of the round and we're just going to single crochet those last two stitches. Just like that. And after that, you should have 17 stitches in your round. And now for this one, we are going to do two single crochet and then a decrease. And now we're going to do a single crochet and then a decrease for the rest of the round. So we're just going to repeat those two things of doing a single crochet and then a decrease like that all the way around to the end of the round when we hit our stitch marker. Okay, we've made it through to the end of that round and now we should have 12 stitches remaining in our work. And as you can see, there's still some gapping here, so we do want to add a bit more stuffing, and we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to grab a little handful of some stuffing here and just kind of shove it down into this hole. Let's add a little bit more here into this gap in the center. Giving it a, a smoosh to make sure and see if he needs any more down. We'll go ahead and put this final handful of floof inside. Why not? Shove it in there to disperse it. And then for this final round, we're just going to do a decrease on every single stitch. one we'll take our stitch marker out it has served its purpose come on buddy <laughs> this parfait XL is really slick okay and our final single crochet so the way I finish off my magic circles is I'm gonna pull a loop through my uh, I'm gonna yarn over and pull a loop through and then we're gonna cut our yarn and I'm going to pull that all the way through here and tighten that down. And now we're going to sew through the front loops only of our magic circle to help close that up. I'm probably okay. So we're going to go through the front loops of the six stitches that are left on our magic circle to close it up. We'll just pull that tight and then we're going to take our end that we have threaded up right here and I'm going to go through and kind of pull that down here and then I'm going to loop around and go this way like that and then I'm going to do that one last time like that pull, cut, and then it'll sink back inside of your work. All right.
And now, <laughs> I love the way the texture changes depending on how you rub this yarn. I really, I really like this yarn a lot, actually. All right, so here is our finished little pillow. And now we're gonna move on to make the facial details so that we can turn this gray little lump, this plain rock from Mrs. Daniel's yard, we're gonna turn it into our rock fax rock. Let's give our rock friend a mouth. To do this, we're gonna need our 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and some black blanket yarn. To begin, we are going to form a slip knot and place the loop onto my hook, tighten it to the correct size, and now we're going to chain 15, 13, 14, and that's our 15. Starting in the second stitch from your hook, we are going to place a single crochet in every one of the 14 remaining chains. I like to work into the back bumps of the chain. It's hard to see because this is blanket, uh, black blanket yarn, but this is the front side of our chain and you can see the two little loops on either side. And if I turn it over, there's a little bump on the back of each stitch. I like to work into the back bumps of the stitches. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just think that it gives a nicer finished look and it does make it easier for me personally when it comes to the next round that we're going to do. So to get started, I'm going to go in that second chain from the hook and I'm going to go through the back bump of that chain and place a single crochet like that. And we're going to do the same thing in every one of our uh, 13, I should say, remaining chains. This is our 13th single crochet here and this last one is 14 and it can be tricky to get through this back bump on the last stitch as well just on anything regardless of color sometimes that that first bump can really uh stretch out and be harder to see all right our first foundation row is complete and now we're going to go from working in a back and forth manner to working in the round and to accomplish this we're going to chain one and instead of turning our work and working this direction we're going to pull this little chain across our base here and crochet into the first stitch here that we had on our chain so we're going to put our hook through the bottom of the stitch we just finished here in that end of the little chain loops just like that and we're going to slip stitch. And what we're going to do is keep going with a slip stitch and slip stitch all the way down to the end here. I've done 13 slip stitches here into my little foundation or base for the mouth and it's time to do our 14th slip stitch. And we're going to be switching colors to change to yellow. Since we are going to be slip stitching instead of single crocheting, there's not going to be a second yarn over to do our color change. So what we're going to do is have to put our hook through the loops and pull our yellow through instead of pulling black. So to do this, I've got my yellow yarn, or which this is Mustard from Premier Basics Chenille. And we're going to place our hook through the loops of our next stitch place this onto our hook instead of our black yarn and pull this through to complete the stitch. And so now we've got our 14 stitches in black and we're ready with our yellow to move on to round two for our mouth base. So at this point, you should have 14 stitches here, 14 stitches here, and a chain on either end that we're going to count as a stitch moving forward. So we've got our yellow yarn ready to go. And in this next stitch here, we are going to place an increase.
just like that. We're going to do another increase. And next we're going to do 12 single crochets down this back side. So we did an increase and another increase. And then we're going to do 12 single crochet. So just a single crochet in every one of our stitches there. All right, and that is 12. And this is what you should have so far. Now, we could go ahead and cut our black yarn here, get it out of the way. And I'm gonna just take this moment to tie our little mustard yarn tail and our black together just to kinda secure them together and get them out of our way. Alrighty. So we're down to, we've got one more stitch and then a, a chain in the end and another stitch here. And we're gonna place a single crochet increase in all three of these stitches. So in our next stitch, we're gonna place a increase, just like this. And in this chain on the end, we're also going to place an increase. And you may have to just finagle to find it, especially because this is black yarn and this one other piece, I can feel this little strand slipping away. There we go. Just didn't want to go underneath. And there is our next increase. And then on the other side around here, we're also going to place an increase. Okay. And now we're going to single crochet back here until this final stitch and right here, we're going to place another increase. So this should be 12 single crochet. Just a single crochet in every one of these until this final chain. And here we're going to do whoop, an increase. Like that. And this should be what it looks like after that second round is complete. So this should be 36 stitches in total. I don't think I said that part. <laughs> All right, so for our next row, what we're going to do here is uh, start off with some more increases. So we're going to place an increase in this first stitch we did on our previous row. One, two, and I'm going to grab a stitch marker because I have reached the amount, the end of the amount my brain is willing to keep track of. There we go. And then another increase. This is our third increase. And then a fourth increase. Like this. So now we've got our four increases. We're going to single crochet our way back down to this end and it should be 13 single crochets. 12 and one more, 13. Okay. So now we're going to place four increases. So an increase in each one of these next four stitches. One. And that's four. I always like to give my work a little tug. All right, so we've got our increases there and now we're going to single crochet our way back down here to our stitch marker. All right. So we got our 14 stitches to make it back down to our other end here. And now this is it for our yellow. We're going to go into that little side of that stitch there and slip stitch to close it up. I'm going to give my stuff a little tug because again, I always like to tug on all my work and make sure that it is laying the way that I want it to. And it's looking pretty good. We're just going to go ahead and uh, pull a loop up here 
move my stitch marker so I don't lose that bad boy. And I'm going to leave a nice long tail for sewing and pull through there. Tighten that up. And bingo bango, you guys, we've got a mouth for our rock friend. Let's make some eyes for our rock friend. Using a blue yarn. This is a navy blue from Premier Basics Chenille. So we've got a magic circle on our blue yarn. And I'm going to place eight single crochet into our magic circle. Two. All right, I've got eight single crochets on my magic circle. I've placed my hook through the two loops of the very first stitch just to kind of help this get its loop shape. And now I'm going to tighten my magic circle while this is on my hook. It just helps me to not lose track of where my stitches are and what direction I'm supposed to be going. All right, and it's feeling pretty good there, so I'm just going to stop. And we are going to move on to our next round. So we've got our eight single crochet here, and we're just going to do eight slip stitches. So there's one and keeping them loose like we did on the mouth. Two. So we've got our seven slip stitches ready for our next and final slip stitch. We are going to switch to white, but to do that, we're going to need to do like we did with the mouth and get our white yarn uh, for our next yarn over. So I'm going to go through the two loops of the next stitch for the final slip stitch and I'm gonna grab white yarn that I've already put a little slip knot in, just like I did with that yellow yarn. And we're gonna place that on our hook and tighten it a little, just a little bit, because we do still kinda want it to have enough room to pull through here and have the loop be the size we want, just like that. And so we've got all of our blue stitches completed. We did eight magic, uh, eight single crochet in our magic circle, if I could talk and our eight slip stitches, and now we're ready to start putting in our white stitches. We can go ahead and get our scissors and snip off our blue yarn, and then I like to take this opportunity to make sure my magic circle is tight and then tie it off, because it can still slip open. And we don't want to pull too hard, just give it a nice tug there, and then I'm going to tie the two blue pieces together like that. And this will just help make sure our magic circle doesn't try to come undone. All right, we're going to put our little white loop back on here. And we're ready to proceed with round three, which we are going to place an increase in every single one of our eight slip stitches from our previous round. So just like this, we're going to single crochet increase increase and just keep going around and we're going to do an increase in every single one of those eight and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round all right I've done seven increases and we're back to here for our final increase for our round and there we've got an increase in every stitch now, usually this is the spot where I would mark the end of my round here, but for uh, both of our eyes, we're not gonna do a complete round for the next round. If we analyze our rock friend in the original artwork, as well as look at this pillow I've already made, the eyes are both a little bit wonky. Um, this one on the right-hand side is closer to being round in its overall nature. But this one over here, it, just like in the original artwork, is a little bit wonky and it leans a little to one side from the other and it helps to give our rock pillow a nice appropriate level of derpiness. So to proceed, we are going to be doing both eyes will start from the same base and at this point is where your two eyes will differentiate. So for each eye, you're gonna need to do all of these uh, three 
rows here as your foundation for your eye and the next row, row four, or round four, is where the two eyes differentiate, okay? So we're gonna start with the wonkiest eye and that's gonna be the, the left-hand side eye over here. And to do this, we're going to begin working up to a larger size of a stitch and work our way back down again. So in our first stitch here, we're going to place a single crochet. And in the next stitch here, we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're yarning over and then going through all of the loops on our hook. And in our next stitch here, we are going to do a double crochet increase. So we're going to place two double crochets in the next stitch. So we're yarning over, going into the stitch and yarning over. Then we pull through two there and then pull through our final two. And we're gonna do that same thing again in the same stitch, doing our double crochet. And you can see how it's working to get bigger, okay? So this next one, we're gonna do a double crochet. Pulling through two and then two. And here, we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're gonna start getting smaller like that. And we're going to do one more half double crochet. See how it's getting a little wonky? Okay, and now we're going to go back to some single crochets. So we're going to do three single crochets. Two, three single crochets. Let's give a little tuggy tug. Like I said, I like to tug on my crochet work. And now we're going to do a couple of slip stitches. So that's one slip stitch here. And then a second slip stitch like this. And that's it. Our wonky eye is complete. We're going to finish off. And when we sew it down, we're going to put this side like this so that we've got the bigger pupil. Um, bigger white side over on this side. All right, so to finish off, as always, we're going to loop through and then cut, leaving a nice long tail so that we can attach this to our rock pillow. All right, and that's one eye down. We're going to make another. All right, I have a second eye, and this is done all the way through round three, and it is ready to go to round four. So for this next eye, we're gonna start off with an increase in the next stitch. Just like that. And then we're gonna do three single crochet. So that's one, two, and three single crochets. Now we're gonna do a half double crochet increase. So in this next one, we're going to do two half double crochet in the same stitch. So there's one half double. And that is a second half double. Okay. Now we're going to move on and do some more single crochets. So we're going to do four single crochet. That's one two, three, and there's our fourth single crochet. And now we're gonna switch to slip stitches and we're gonna do six slip stitch. So that's one. And then again on these, I don't wanna go tight and like cinch them down. I just want to have enough of them to be a little border. There's three, four, five and six and this is our second eye the same thing to finish off I'm gonna pull a loop through here and I'm going to leave a long tail and we'll pull that through and then just pull it nice and tight and there we go our second eye is complete 
It's time to make the last item for our rock friend and give him a tongue. So get your 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and red blanket yarn. You can do just like a red from um, Bernat. I, I don't remember which, which color it is. I think it's just red from Bernat. But this is cherry from uh, Premier Basics Chenille. And what we're gonna do is form a slip knot and place that on our hook tighten our loop to where we want it and we are going to chain six. All right so we've got six chains on our hook and starting in the second chain from the hook we're going to place a single crochet in all five of the remaining chains and similar to what I've done on the other uh, parts for the mouth. We're going to go into the back bump of the uh, stitches here. It'll be a little easier to show you this with the red yarn. So here is our second stitch from the hook and if I turn this over you can see this little bump here and this is what we're going to crochet into. So going into this little bump just like that I'm going to place a single crochet and I'm going to do that in all five of these remaining chains. So we're going into this final one here to place our last single crochet like this. All right, and now we've got our little base going for our tongue. And this one we're going to chain one and then we're going to turn our work this way and we're going to place a single crochet in the next four stitches and four. Now in our next stitch here, we're going to do an increase. Oop. Lost my yarn. There we go. And so now into this end chain. We're going to also place an increase. And in this next stitch here, we're going to do, you guessed it, another increase. So that's three increase total around the curved edge of our tongue. All right, and so now we're going to single crochet our way back up this side with four single crochet and four. And again, I like to tug on my stitches to help even them out like this. And you can see our tongue taking shape so next we're going to do a slip stitch border all around the outside of this. So to start with, I'm just going to go in here and try to place about three slip stitches across the flat edge here, just going between the stitches. Just going in here as well. And slip stitching my way across there to that way we've got a little flat edge just like this and now we're going to keep going and slip stitch around and put a slip stitch in every stitch and we're going to go back in there and do one final one like that you can see it kind of gave it a little bit bigger size. And then just to help this, I'm going to go in my next stitch and slip stitch one final time like that, just to help round out that edge. And now we're going to finish off by pulling that loop up on our hook, cutting our yarn, and pulling that tail through and tightening it down. All right, so we've got our little tongue ready to go. It's time for assembly. 
to get ready for assembly, we need to place all of our components in where we'd like them to be for sewing. And you know, in order to make sure you've got everything in the right place, it is helpful to take all of these parts and kind of place them where you think they're gonna go. So for the mouth, we're going to place, it doesn't matter if you place it, you know, one way or the other, but you can take this guy like this and just hide your tails underneath the back here. And if these are really long, you don't want them to be very long. You can trim these a little bit shorter like this, just to make them a little easier to hide. And that way, you know, they won't felt like fall out or get in the way or tangle up. So where I like to do the mouth is find your center here where your original uh, starting round is and line it up to where he's just below. So you can see that entire little first ring there and then line him up in the center just so that it's not, you know, widely off to one side or another and giving him like a, a slanty mouth. We want to make sure that it's kind of even so just line him up to where he's about in the center here. And then I like to pin it in place like this. Um, these are just some long sewing pins, um, but you could use big toothpicks or, you know, uh, stick pins, whatever's handy chopsticks. <laughs> Those can be really useful when you're sewing together big amigurumi. Okay, so we've got this where we think we want it. And if you want to make sure that you like the placement with the rest of your uh, facial details too, we can pull those over and just kind of line them up. And I like to give about, you know, a good finger width between the mouth and the eyes. I'm just going to tug this guy a little bit more there and line it up to where the pupil is closer to this side. And these guys would want to be about even with the edge. And once it's all sewed in place, we'll be adding our tongue on top right about here. So you can look at your rock and kind of pin things, place things, make sure that you like how everything looks and that the proportions look good to you. And then we're just going to take our extra components out of here because they're just going to be in our way when we're sewing in a minute here and place them off to the side. And it's time for us to sew on our mouth. So we'll put this where you can see. And I'm going to just take this and go into the body here and underneath a stitch just like that there and now that I've come up I'm going to go through both loops of this next stitch like this and I find it's easier on these first few stitches for sure to just go one step at a time like go through the body like this pull your string to where it doesn't have to be super tight there and then I go through the stitch if I try to cram it through and go all in here you're gonna get some wonky and uneven stitches and you know we want we've come this far we want our rock friend to be as authentic as possible and we've put all of the effort into making all of our parts we're in the final stretch i know everyone hates sewing things together trust me i'm with you but it does pay to just take a little extra bit of care when you're doing this to make sure that your project turns out looking its best when it's done because a bad sewing job really can be a make or break difference between your project looking good and like kind of professional and your project looking a little a little sad and wonky Although with this guy, if it turns out a little wonky, it'll be fine because the original inspiration is pretty wonky. Just figure out where you want the edge of your mouth to be and try to aim your stitches so that you're keeping that shape. Does that make sense? And we're just gonna keep on keeping on just like this. 
going through the body and then through both of the stitches. And we're just going to keep going like this until we've gotten all the way around back to our original stitch. So I'll meet you back here once this is all sewn in place. Let's give our rock pillow some eyes. So we're going to orient our eyes. I place them about like a finger width here. A little generous finger width. And then to get maximum derpiness, you want to make sure that this pupil, um, the center of your eye is closer to the outside and that the bigger side is on the inside. So that way his eye is a little wonky. And this eye is technically just a hair above. So instead of doing it to a finger, I'm going to put my thumb in there, just give it a little bit of extra space. And then I'm going to shove a pin in that guy right there. And now it's time to sew these on. And this eye, you know, it's it's a little bit wonky, like in this zone. So you can kind of twist it and see where you like the pupil of it to be. I'm going to go for this. I'm going to twist this where I can see it here. And we're going to do just like we did for sewing the mouth. Oh, there's a little piece of fluff sticking up. We're just going to go into the body and back out a side here. Um, the main key is to not go too far outside of the edge of where this eye is so that you don't stretch the eye to be extra large, if that makes sense. Like that, we got our first little stitch in and we're just gonna go back into the next stitch. And make sure we're going through both loops of the stitch here. Like this. We're just gonna keep going all the way around this eye. And once we've got this eye completed, we will check the positioning on our second eye and we're just going to do the same thing for that. So I'm going to finish this eye and I'll check back and we'll start this eye together as well. I reached the last couple stitches here on this first eye, so I figured we'd check back in and do them together. And you know, it's not a race, so if you're not a speedy sewer, it's okay. If you're making this just for yourself, you know, it's just about quality and not about quantity. So you don't have to make it super quick. If you need to take a little bit of time to make sure that your stitches fall where you'd like them, then you're going to be fine to do that. So let's stitch shift up a little bit more on this side, but that's fine. And what we're going to do is go through here like that just to kind of close that gap it was a little bit gappy right there and now i'm going to loop that through here just make a little knot just to make sure this is nice and secure and then i'm going to bury my tail into the body of the eye we're going to finagle that there and I'm going to go back in and just come out again on this side. Just want to make sure this is nice and covered. All right. I one is done, my friends. So now it's time to move on to our second eye. So we've got, <clears throat> we've got our second eye uh, ready to go here. I'm going to pull the pin. And look at how far this one is on this side. I think this is going to be fine. So we'll go this way in our sewing and that way we can kind of control where it sits. And I think we want it to sit right here. So I'm going to try to hold the eye down and start my sewing.
I've reached my last couple stitches here on this last eye. So we're gonna go in here and do these together. And of course, this is the exact moment when my cat has decided to eat some kibble. So if you hear some slight crunching in the background and clinking of his kibble bits, then just know that's his contribution to our project. Thank you, Griffin, for your contribution, sir. Your service is appreciated. All right, and there we have it, you guys. Let's flip our eye around and see this one, it, this one ended up a little higher than this one, but you know what? That's fine, because they're a little bit wonky. That's the beauty of this. We are making a recreation of a cartoon thing that was made by a fictional character who is a child. So all of these elements combine. If you're just a little wonky, it's fine. It's fine. Greg made it. Greg's is wonky. Okay, I think I got one more stitch right here. Just when I th said I was done, I'm looking at this and there's just one little stitch here that was still not really sewn down. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm going kind of knot that off and we're going to bury the tail and as I'm doing that I'm noticing there's just this tiny little piece of blue that's sticking through when I did my color change and I'm going to use this opportunity to kind of hide that so we're going to bury this tail in here and we're just going to come up near that spot we're going to turn this over here and I'm just going to kind of cover it we're going to go in like that and we're going to sew around it with that so that that little blue spot is covered. It's coming together. Now it's time for us to do our tongue. So let's grab the tongue and we'll come back here and finish this up. It's the tongue and we are ready to get sewing. And now I sew the tongue just to the edge of the black area. We want some black area to be showing um, and then on the top, we don't want the black to peek through. Um, in the original artwork, there is no black line above the tongue. It goes to yellow to red. So that's the vibe I went for when I tried to recreate it. So <clears throat> to begin, we're just going to go through and I'm going to grab underneath this yellow stitch not underneath here where there's black because then the black might show through. I'm going to go under here, under the yellow part, okay? Yeah, see how that's not going to attach the black to a visi in a visible way? <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry about this. I, I was sick recently in my... Uh, My throat was getting gunky every time I try to talk now. And we're just gonna do the same idea as what we did with our other parts. I'm going a little bit looser on the stitches here because I don't want to warp the top of this and bunch it. I do want it to stay flat across the front. And if you, if you pull super tight on these stitches, it is going to kind of bunch together. And that's looking good so I'm gonna go back I pulled back a little this way see if I go like this how the tongue starts to round this corner but if I pull back like this it keeps this edge more flat and keeps this more crisp this is what I'm doing when I'm when I was tugging on it is trying to see what direction is going to keep this going the way that I want it so I'm gonna go in here and then back up through the side over here. And then I'm gonna come up through that same stitch on this side and take it back down. I'm 
just want to make sure we're getting this guy secured. So as you can see, my focus is trying to keep this tongue shape the right shape. Sorry for the use of the same word over and over again there. Couldn't think of a better way to say that. And if you, if you pull too hard here, it's going to warp the shape of the mouth. You see that? So we don't want to pull too hard down and then cause this, this, to, this shape to distort. Just going to keep on keeping on like this. But I think you're getting the picture. I'll finish these last few stitches and meet you back here at the very end. We are at the final stitch here. So what I'm going to do, same thing as I had done before of like the twisting and stuff, we're going to do this way here and try to pull up a little bit. And then go through here. And then I'm going to go back into this stitch like that and then cross to this edge like that. So you see if I do this versus doing that, you can see how this kind of stretches it out this way. So I'm going to come up over here like that. And now, tie a little knot, same as we did with our other things. We're gonna pull that down through here. And then, trim it like that. our rock pillow is done oh my gosh he's so freaking cute but let's go get a better look at him um not so zoomed in he's coming for you he's coming for you thank you so much for watching my tutorial i really hope that you like this pattern and that you enjoy your new rock friend pillow if you did please be sure to like the video and subscribe so that you don't miss any future tutorials or over the garden wall inspired patterns. Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.